So the sine law works when you have a known pair, right? You know an angle and you know the side opposite that angle. The cosine law works when you have two sides and the included angle, the angle in between them, right? Or you have all three sides. So here is triangle A, B, C. And we're going to drop down an altitude, just as we did before, to be the height. And we're going to name the sides. And sides are named with the lowercase letter of the sides. They're opposite. So this is C and this is B. And because we made a right angle triangle here, we're going to call this X, which makes this length C minus X. Okay, so this is what we've got going on in this particular triangle. So the analysis works like this. Bless you. We know that in the left-hand triangle here, by Pythagorean theorem, we know that b squared is equal to x squared plus h squared. We also know <coughs> in that left-hand triangle that the cosine of angle A is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is x over b. So the cosine of angle A is equal to x over b. Now, if we look at the right-hand triangle, sure. we can see that a squared is equal to c minus x, so this side squared, plus h squared. If we expand the c minus x, so if we actually square that, how many terms are we going to get? Okay, we'll get four terms, which we'll collect into three, right? Because two of them will be alike. <clears throat> so we get a squared is equal to, so we get c squared minus 2cx plus x squared plus h squared, right? So we've expanded that. Now, we say, uh huh, but what can we say about x squared plus h squared? It's equal to b squared. And what can we say about x? Yeah, so x is equal to b times the cosine of a. So what we want to do is we, we kind of want to get rid of the x and the h. Because right? they're just an artificial construct we made by dropping that down. So we say, OK, well, I can get rid of the x because I can replace it with b times the cosine of a. I can get rid of x squared plus h squared replacing it with b squared. So <coughs> we end up with a squared is c squared minus 2c times b cos a plus b squared. So now we're just in terms of A, B, and C, right? And angle A. We've got side little A, side little B, side little C. We've got angle A. We don't have X, we don't have H, right? Doesn't matter. And we'll just clean this up. So we're going to write A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cos A. And that is the cosine. So a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. Now you can rearrange that, right? Say so. What what this relies on is that I know angle a and that I know little b and little c, and that I will be able to calculate little a. Okay. So I can get little a if I know little b, little c, and angle a. So if I know two sides and the includes, includes, included or enclosed angle, two sides and the enclosed angle, then I can use the cosine law to solve for the third side. This could be rearranged. So 
you write b squared is equal to, and all you do is you just do the other two letters, right? So b, so it's a squared plus c squared minus two. You notice this is b and c, that's these two guys, so a and c, and the cosine of the angle that goes with this, so the cos of b. And c squared is a squared plus b squared, so again, the other two sides, minus two times those other two sides, times the cosine of the angle opposite the side that we are finding. Right, so if we have two sides and the, the angle between those two sides, then we're finding the side opposite that known angle, right? Now in sine law, we need to know the angle and the side opposite that angle, okay? So when you're deciding, <coughs> you know, what do I use? This will be kind of in like tomorrow's stuff. This is a trig worksheet, right? And it's like, well, what, what do I use? Do I use sine law or cosine law? And you have to ask yourself, do I know two sides and the included angle? Then I use cosine law. Or do I have a known pair, right? A known pair, I'm going to use the sine law. You can also solve for an angle. So here's the one we give you on the formula sheet. C squared is A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cos C. So we say, all right, well, how are you going to solve that for an angle? Well, we can't solve directly for the angle, but we can solve for cos C. So let's get rid of the A squared. So C squared minus A squared minus B squared is equal to negative 2AB cos C. So the cosine of angle C is equal to this term, C squared minus A squared minus B squared over negative 2AB. And we can clean that up because we do not want to have a negative in the denominator, right? So as a rule, we don't want radicals in denominators. We don't want negatives. So we'll just take the negative and write the cosine of angle C. So we'll change these signs. So it'll be A squared plus B squared minus C squared over 2AB. So that's on the formula sheet. <laughs> and that's on the formula sheet. As for sine law, you only get the one form, A over sine A is equal to B over sine B is equal to C over sine C. And you just know you can flip that if you want to work out an angle. So if you know two sides in the included angle or you know all three sides, you use the cosine law. Now, cosine law has got a lot of stuff going on, so you really only want to use it once. Okay, so if I have to solve a triangle, I need to look and say, what have I got? Oh, I got two sides of the enclosed angle. Okay, so I'll use cosine law. I'll figure out this other side, right? So in this triangle here, the one we started with, I'll use cosine law. I'll figure this out. Once I do that, I'm going to have a known pair, and I'll just use the sine law. Okay, so if you're solving a triangle, use the cosine law only once. Just to find a side or an angle. If you have all three sides, you're going to find an angle, and then you'll have a known pair. And then you go to the sine law, right? Because sine law is a lot easier to work with. There's only like four little things. Here, we're squaring everything, and we're doing cosines and stuff like that. Okay? Sine law, you know, much easier. All right, so let's just do an example of, <clears throat> well, let's solve a triangle. So let's do a full solve. Solve. Triangle ABC, where angle A is 48 degrees, little c is 7 centimeters, and little b is 8 centimeters. And there's little a. So in order to solve this, <clears throat> we need to find all three sides and all three angles, right? So you start off looking for a known pair. This is the only angle I know. I don't know this side, <clears throat> so I can't use the sine law. So I'm going to have to use the cosine law, and we're going to solve for side little a. So let's start off with the formula. So a squared is b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. <clears throat> now, I like to solve directly. So I'm going to write down little a is the square root of 
right? So you're going to take the square root. So here's the deal. If you're using sine law and you're solving for an angle and you end up with, hey, that angle is 0.617 degrees, you usually say, no, it's not. My diagram is either way off because 0.617 degrees is like the lines are right on top of each other. Right? So it means, oh, right, I got to do an inverse sine. If we solve for cosine law and you got a side of 7 and a side of 8, like what's the largest that side A could possibly be? So if you took the 7 and the 8 and, that, and you just open them up flat, how long would the line be? Here's 7, here's 8. It'd be 15, right? You get a number over 15, you know, well, that can't be right. Okay. As a matter of fact, it can't even be 15 because it's only a 48 degree angle. If that was a 179 degree angle in here, then it's, a, yeah, it's going to be pretty close to 15, right? Because it's going to be pretty close to flat. But it isn't, right? There's only a 48 degree angle. Okay. So if you put it into here, you're going to end up with the number bigger than 15, and then you got to say, oops, got to take the square root of that, right? So you got to think. If you go directly to the square root, so this will be 8 squared plus 7 squared minus 2 times 8 times 7 times the cos of 48 degrees. Okay, work that out. You're going to mess up. Now's a good time to mess up. So everybody work it out, right? I want you all to come up with a number. Okay, and then we'll round it to the nearest tenth. Okay, but we'll leave it in our calculator because we're going to do a subsequent calculation, right? So while you're doing a task, you clear your calculator. First thing you do when you sit down is you set it to degree mode. Okay, second, I need the square root of, okay, 8 squared plus 7 squared minus 2 times 8 times 7 times the cosine of 48. And what do we get? 6.169. Okay. So I'm just going to write that out. And I write down 6.169 and just say, you know, if I'm, when I go to my final answer, I say A is 6.2 centimeters, right? But for now, I just want to remember that it's not actually. Okay, now, generally I try and avoid using a calculated value, but in this case, we're going to. So now we have a known pair, right? We just need to get an, one of the other angles, right? And we know all three sides. Now, technically, I could use cosine law to get a different angle, but if I do, I'm still going to use a calculated value, right? So it's like, well, if I'm going to, let's do it a bit easier. So what do you want to find, B or C? B. Okay, so now we're going to set up and go sine B over little b is sine, what are we using? A, right? We can't use C, we don't know angle C. Is sine A over little a, right? So we've calculated little a, we have a known pair, but we're going to use the number that's sitting in our calculator, right? 6.169, blah, blah, blah. We're not going to round it to 6.2 and use it. We're going to use that number. <clears throat> All right, so let's just set this up a little bit further. So the sine of angle B <clears throat> is B times the sine of angle A over little a. Okay, so what's B? B is the inverse sine of 8 times the sine of 48 degrees over 6.169, right? Okay, so work it out. Now at this point, now we can round B to the nearest tenth, right? We'll go a tenth of a degree. Okay, so it's uh, sine inverse. <clears throat> so second function, sine, right? And I'm just going to use this number. I'm going to pull it back down. So 8 times the sine of 48, close bracket, divided by second function answer, right? Or you could reach up and pull that down, depending on the calculator you're using. Okay, close bracket. Now I've done sine inverse. It's going to go directly to the angle. 74.5 degrees. So B is equal to 74.5 degrees. All right. So now we got everything we need. We can go over here and we can list everything. Right. So angle A is 48 degrees. Angle B is 74.5 degrees. <clears throat> and angle C is what's angle C? 180 minus. 
that minus 48. It's 57.5 degrees. Little a is 6.2 centimeters. Little b is 8 centimeters. Little c is 7 centimeters. Okay, there's your triangle salt. <clears throat> All right, so we looked at it and we said, I can't use a sine law, right? Why can't I use a sine law? I don't have a known pair, right? I have an angle, but I don't know the side opposite. Okay, well, what else do I know? But I know these two sides, right? And they're enclosing the angle that I have. All right, so I can use this, the uh, cosine law. Use the cosine law to solve for a side. We get this, right? We don't round, okay? We're gonna round when we go to state it here. We don't want to round it just yet. Okay. Now, I don't know. Would anything bad have happened if I had rounded it? Let's see. So what if I use 6.2 up here instead of second function answer? So let's go here. Uh, divided by 6.2. 73.0. Yeah, that would be bad. Okay. <clears throat> So that's 73.5, and it should be 74.5. It's off by a whole degree. All right? So don't use, if you do that, then angle B is wrong, then angle C is wrong, and if you use the sine law here, <clears throat> again, with 6.2, then okay. So don't use roundabout. Questions? Okay. In triangle PQR. Now, there is no ambiguity with the cosine law, right? Because the cosine law, you either have side angle side. Side angle side is a triangle congruence, right? So if I say, draw a triangle, it's got this side, then an angle of this, and then this side, everybody's drawing the same triangle. They may all be oriented differently, but they are the same. If we did them on transparencies, we could lay them on top of each other, they would be identical. Or side, side, side. Same deal. Side, side, side is a triangle congruence. If I say to everybody, draw me a triangle with a side of, so little p is 11 meters. Little q is 9 meters. And middle r is 10 meters. Then everybody is drawing the exact same triangle. Right? That's what we mean by a triangle congruence. Right? They must be identical. So again, they could be oriented differently. We might have to take some and flip them over or turn them around, but they're all going to fit on top of each other. Right? If I gave you transparencies and we had an overhead, they don't even make those things anymore. You know? We had an overhead and we laid all the transparencies on top of them, we'd line them all up. Right? It would be all the same. Side, side, angle, they wouldn't all be the same. right? Now, they might be, right? Or maybe we don't have a triangle. So remember the, the ambiguous case. We don't have a triangle, or we have a 90 degree triangle, or we have two possible triangles, or we only have one possible triangle. All right, what should we do first? Draw a picture. Always draw a picture. Okay, it doesn't have to be a terrifically accurate picture, but I made this the longest side. So I'll call it P is 11. I don't know which one of those is shorter. Let's say this is Q is 9. These are meters, so that's Q. And R is 10 meters. OK, we're going to do the same thing. We are going to, oh no, you know what we're going to do? We're going to do this. Find the area, determine. Not gonna find, we don't find stuff. Okay, what do I need to do to get the area? One and a half base height. What's the base here? Okay, so the base is eleven. So we're gonna draw in a height. So there's the height. How am I gonna figure out the height? What do I need to find in order to get the height? An angle. Which angle? Angle R or angle Q, right? If we find angle P, 
then we'd have to make something else the base, right? So the way we've drawn it, right, if you want to, if you want to find angle P, then you draw the altitude to Q or the altitude to R. In this case, it makes just sense to draw it this way. So we need to find either angle R or angle Q, okay? Pick one, R, okay, doesn't matter. So we look at our formula sheet and we transpose, right, where we see A, B, C. So you can either relabel this as A, B, C, right, or you can just say the cosine of angle R is equal to, well, and you're looking and you say, well, if the cosine, I'm looking at my formula sheet, it says the cosine of angle C is A squared plus B squared minus C squared, then this must be P squared plus Q squared minus R squared, right? So the thing I'm subtracting is the same letter as the angle, only it's opposite, over 2PQ, right? And then it's over 2 and then not the C, right? So the A and B. Okay, we can do this in one fell swoop, right? By doing the inverse cosine. So R is equal to cos inverse, okay? And now I'm going to fill it in. So P, so we got 11 squared plus Q is 9 squared minus 10 squared over 2 times 11 times 9. Okay, go ahead and work this out. Half of you are going to get it wrong. Okay, and that's a good thing. Right? Half of you won't get it wrong, and that's a good thing. Because if you get it wrong, then we got to figure out, okay, what did you do that got this wrong? So work it out, okay? Like everybody, honestly, get the calculator out, work it out. Same deal here, like if you forget to do the cos inverse, again, you're going to get a number between negative 1 and 1, right? And you're going to say, I don't think that angle is like negative 0.7 degrees or something, or right? something we got to, okay, wait, I did something. Okay, so work it out, and then we'll compare answers. So error is probably wrong. <coughs> we got 58.99 degrees and... Uh, last time I did it, I worked out angle Q, so... Okay, so what's angle R? What'd you say? 58? All right, so those of you that got it wrong, good on you. Let's get it right. So here's what you have to do, presuming you got it wrong. Okay, so let's clear this. So I'm going to say cos inverse. It's got a bracket. Oh, I forgot my school Okay, so here's what you got to do. The division bar here says you must work out the top first, then work out the bottom, and then do the division. So the way we get our Tyler calculator to do that is we put a bracket down, and we go 11 squared plus 9 squared minus 10 squared bracket divided by bracket 2 times 11 times 9. Bracket, bracket. Okay, so we need to bracket this, the numerator, and say work this out. Bracket the denominator and say work this out. Then do the division. Okay, calculate as order of operations. You can do brackets first, right? And then do the cos inverse, and there's our 58.992. Okay, so if you didn't have it right, fix it. Make sure that it's now sitting in your uh, in your calculator. It's 59.2. All right, so. Is that it? Are we done? We found this angle. It's 58.99. We need the area. To get the area, what do we need? We need H. To get H, how are we going to do H? We got angle R now. What are we going to do? 
You're going to use what ratio? Yeah, so it's a right <laughs> angle, it's a right angle triangle. No, you don't know the side. It's a right angle triangle, you know angle R. You want to find H. What's the name of side H in relation to angle R? Opposite. And what else do we know? We know that hypotenuse Q, right? So we go over here and we say sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse, right? So now we are communicating two things, right? That we know we're working in a 90 degree triangle, we're using the sine ratio. Now we're going to fill stuff in. So the sine of uh, 58.99 blah 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 is equal to h over 9. So h is equal to 9 times the sine of 58.99 blah blah blah. Okay, so I need h to be uh, 9 times, so 9 times the sine of second function answer. Okay, which just brings that number down. Which is seven points of down. Do I round this? Seven point seven one three eight. No, right? Because we're gonna use that and now we can work out area. So the area is one half base height. Which is one half. Our base is eleven, our height is seven point seven one dot 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 dot. Okay, which is there, right? So we go one half, so 0.5 times 11 times second function answer is 42.4. And what kind of units are on this thing? Meters squared. Okay, so possibly, you know, you're working a landscaping crew over the summer or, you know, that. Your job, and you've got this triangular area in a park, and you have to get some loam or something to topsoil, whatever. You need a certain volume. In order to figure out the volume, you're going to need to know the area, and all you know is that you can measure the three sides of the triangle, right? That, that's it, right? You don't have a protractor, and it's kind of inaccurate to take, you know, a little protractor like this and stick it down where you got an 11 side, you know, and it's not, a, you know, if it was concrete. And it came in at a sharp angle, you know, then yeah, you could take a protractor and measure it if you wanted. But you do have a measuring tape, okay, and so you can accurately, you know, here, I'll hold this in, you walk out there, what is it? Oh, this is 9 meters, okay, what's this? This is 11 meters, 10 meters. All right, what do we do? I don't know, phone of math. I don't know how to do this stuff. Do I have a calculator on me? It's like, I'll ask Siri, hey Siri, what's the year? I wonder if you could ask. I think you could ask Wolf from Alpha. Not bad. I don't know. Should I should I do that on the video or you know we're we're kind of done I think. And the viewers want to know. Uh, all right, let's see. Uh, let's try Wolf from Alpha. Yeah, I, I know. So I, I'm just gonna go straight to Wolf from Alpha. So let's just see if we can type it in and see. Um, so I want the area of a triangle with sides 9, 10, and 11. Yeah, commas, come on. We should be able to parse this thing without a comma. So for, I think it's going to try and say this is what I think you mean. Using closest Wolfram Alpha area, we try and go with side 9, 10. Uh, so, yeah, we need to be, maybe we shouldn't have said 11. So let's throw some commas in there with size 9, 10, 11. Uh, 42.4, so there you go. See, the visual representation and everything else, right? So you just got to reach into your pocket and pull up Wolfram Alpha. And dig. So look, we even did it right then, right? We, we got the answer. And an exact answer is 30 root 2. Okay. I don't even know how we would have got that if we... Uh, 
Okay, done. We're done. Done. <clears throat> done.